focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. We all dream of retiring rich, but our dreams often take a hit when the reality of our daily lives kicks in. In today's world, we need to be financially responsible and invest wisely, linking our life goals to our investments. That's where we come in. Hello and welcome to Season 5 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV18. I'm your host, Mridhu Bhandari, and we're here to tell you all that you need to know about personal finance and wealth management. Today we are in Gurugram at the Fortis Research Memorial Institute that's one of India's largest multi-specialty hospitals and healthcare institutes. It's a company with a vision to create a world-class integrated healthcare delivery system in India entailing the finest medical skills and distinctive patient care. Fortis, founded in 1996, is today one of the country's fastest growing healthcare groups that's making its presence felt internationally as well. And NSC Finvis, with its theme Dream On, engaged with the employees at Fortis and Gurugram to understand their thoughts on financial planning and help them allocate their assets wisely. Financial literacy is the knowledge of how we can achieve the goals for our future, uh, what we want to do in our later part of the life and how we secure for that in the current scenario. Financial literacy to me means that how you are able to uh, take care of your future financial prospects, how you're able to make sure that you get yourself financially secured for you as well as your family. I want to invest in property. Uh, it, it, I think uh, it's a huge high for me to have a, a property or a home in my name and, and that would be wonderful, right? To, to, to start planning for that, get that corpus together besides the, the loan that I would need, uh, what are the kind of loans that I can get, one is that and the second th thing is uh, planning some uh, sort of a cover for myself uh, and of course for my family uh, for, the, for health. What is the balance? How much percentage should you really invest in? What would be the basic you know, take home message for us? Uh, and it should be very simple, for simple, not really using jargons and stuff. You, we would want to really understand that if you have X amount of money, what percentage should, should go into this and you know, something that we can take back and really do something with it. Welcome to NSC Finvis, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are at the Fortis Memorial Research Institute in Gurugram and a set of financial experts is all set to get engaged with the employees of Fortis here. Welcome gentlemen, let's introduce the panel to you. Ankur Kapoor, founder of Plutus Capital and Tanvir Alam, founder of Fincart. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us Thank on you. NSC Finvis Season 5, gentlemen. So, Tanvir, perhaps uh, we can start with you telling us how essential is it to start early and how important is it to leverage the power of compounding as early as possible? Okay. I think the only secret sauce to wealth creation is the power of compounding. So if you start with 10,000 rupees a month, okay, in say one, two or three of the funds that is complete 23, uh, 20 years and above. So in one year, you would have invested 1 lakh 20,000. 10, 10 years, it would have been 12 lakh rupees. In 20 years, it would be 24 lakh rupees. So if you invested for a period of 10 years, over the last 10 years, your 12 lakh rupees would technically would have become anywhere about 24, 25 lakh rupees. Now, if you had the habit of continuing and investing for a period of 20, 20 years, from 1997 till today, only 10,000 rupees a month, that investment of 24 lakh rupees, the amount for all the three funds that have completed 20 years is anywhere between 2.75 to about 3, 3 crore plus. That is what is power of compounding. Right. So our core topic of discussion today is asset allocation. For all the young employees here who've just started working, just thinking of starting to save, Ankur, can you explain that term to them? How important uh, is asset allocation? How important is it to have a diversified portfolio? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, we often uh, tend to be driven by the investment products and we associate investment products as asset classes. For example, oftentimes I've heard people talking about mutual fund as an asset class. But let me just deep dive into what are the asset classes, you know, uh, broadly. Yeah. So one is the bond asset class 
often people are aware of bond as corporate bonds or government bonds but even your fixed deposit is classified in a bond category the next level would be the equity which is uh, you know it can be a direct equity or through mutual funds or even through ulips uh, the third category is gold you can buy gold or you can invest in etfs uh, sovereign gold uh, fund that's the third category and the fourth category and probably i'll uh, limit myself are the alternative asset classes say private equity and venture capital which uh, you know are achievable only for ultra hni clients uh, so two asset classes i um, usually focus on which are called traditional asset classes one is bond and the other is equity you can have any underlying within them but your return is predominantly defined by how these asset classes are performing so if equity is overvalued let's say and if you go ahead and invest in uh, you know of the best performing mutual fund the chances of you not making money are very high you know so you should always focus on what are the, what is the underlying of what, wherever you are investing but always remember that a combination of these will help you manage your money better right so what are those parameters that that define asset allocation for any individual so if you look at power of compounding that i suggested power of compounding works well if the time horizon is long mm. it does not efficiently work if the time horizon is less than 5 years so if you have goals or objectives that is coming within the time frame of 1 to 5 years then you can choose funds which is bonds oriented that is fixed deposit kind of a product or a bond mutual fund if you have a 4 or 5 year time horizon then you can create a hybrid product what is a hybrid product a mix of equity and a bond fund together that creates a balanced fund for you so if you actually allocate money in that based on your goals most likely you will arrive at an asset allocation yourself Okay so let me bring in some audience questions at this point in time Shivam Sabarwal he is a manager of the treasury and corporate finance department here at Fortis his question is how to select a mutual fund what is the withdrawal time limit in NPS what are tax implications on these Ankur so uh, talking about bonds to begin with bond mutual funds well all bond mutual funds are not the same they have very very different risk profile uh we can start with the liquid uh, bond uh, or the liquid fund which is the lowest category uh, from a risk profile it will return you similar to what you get on fd uh, but it is liquid you can withdraw at any point in time right. followed by um, uh, the ultra short term debt fund and then short term debt fund medium term debt fund and uh, long term debt fund I would often recommend people unless you are planning for your retirement and you are mapping you know 15 year or a 10 year horizon you should stay away from a medium term or a long term category because they are very very risky in terms of the daily fluctuations you see in them so try and stay in liquid uh, ultra short term debt fund short term debt fund category from a taxation point of view these are uh, treated similar to an fd if you are invested for less than 3 years but if you are invested for more than 3 years uh, then you get indexation benefit what i feel is why nps is good is uh, whatever management of money you have to do the split you can actually use the age uh, level asset allocation and it can allocate accordingly it focuses purely on the retirement so it can be a very long term instrument and the management within nps also is handled at a very very low expense ratio at this point in time we are going to head into a short break on the other side of the break we are going to learn all about goal based investing from a set of financial experts right here at fortis in gurugram Welcome back to season 5 of NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are in Gurugram at the Fortis Memorial Research Institute and a set of financial experts is here engaging with the employees of Fortis. In this segment we are going to learn all about goal based investing, how it's important for us to link our life's goals with our investment plans. So let's begin by classifying short, medium and long term as far as investments are concerned. Ankur when you think of a personal goal uh, you have to reflect on your you know personal situation in terms of uh, you know your own retirement i always and always classify your own retirement 
as the first goal you should be planning for. The reason for that is you do get education loan for your kids, but you don't get retirement loan. You have to plan for it. After retirement would be followed by usually uh, you know, your education for kids, their marriage. So depending upon your personal situation, those could be medium term to long term goals. Anything beyond five year time frame can have equity exposure and I would rather say should have equity exposure if you really want to beat the inflation. Probably besides this, I will always keep some portion of money for the liquidity. Right. You know, God forbid anything can happen. So having a liquidity for three to six months in a FD or a ultra short term debt fund is a must. Okay. And how does one decide how much to invest on a monthly basis? Uh, if I have a short term goal or a medium term goal, how do I know that how much... Uh, you know, what percentage of my income am I supposed to put away for that goal? In fact, uh, see, India has a savings rate of almost 30%. Okay. If you want to be in that race, ideally 30% of your earnings should go into the savings rate, very simply. But having said that, if you are still not doing that, a bare minimum of 25% is absolutely essential for balancing your present life consumption and your future life consumption. Right. All right. Okay, so let's get in some more uh, audience questions. The next one here is from Vinod Varke, who's assistant manager of uh, HR. And the dream is to have a home at his hometown and also fund the child's education at an international university. The amount he wants to accumulate is about 1 crore rupees. 15 year time horizon on a monthly basis, if he saves 20,000, is that going to be enough? One crore is today's cost. Will the cost remain the same after 15 years? The answer is probably not. Uh, most of the education, foreign education has 5% inflation and similarly for Indian education is 10% at which it grows. So the cost will probably not be 1 CR. On the home front, uh, you know, I need to have the numbers in terms of, uh, you know, what it will accumulate. But right. 20 years should, uh, you know, 20,000 in 15 years should be upwards of 60 lakhs in total, 60, right. 65 lakhs. So even in today's time, probably this money will not be sufficient to meet the goal. Okay. All right. So maybe, uh, Vinod, you can up those savings uh, every month by a couple of thousand. Uh, but then we, we Indians have this fetish for the yellow metal. On every happy occasion, we like to buy gold, we like to gift gold. Uh, and jewelry, of course, is not really an investment. But uh, there are other ways to invest in gold. You have the sovereign gold bonds and you have uh, coins that you can invest in. Is that a good option in today's market? See, gold is one of the safest currency. It protects you in adverse economic scenarios. The options available for gold investing are sovereign gold bond or your gold monetization scheme, the gold ETF. So the best as of now would be the sovereign gold bond that you invest. All right. Another question here uh, from Manish Bhattar, who's the head of uh, Treasury and Corporate Finance. The dream is a financially independent retirement. The amount he wants to accumulate is about 8 crore rupees. If on a monthly basis he saves 2 lakh rupees for the next 7 years, uh, considering he's 43 right now, is that good enough? Say 2 lakh rupees per year, it's about 24 lakh rupees a year. Yeah. That's just 7, approximately 2 crores. Okay. Now, that should not be sufficient in seven-year time horizon. If you allow a little time, then perhaps it could help you achieve that number of eight crores. But uh, in seven years, it will be difficult because power of compounding may not be working very efficiently. In that. Okay, so on that note, we are going to head into another short break. But on the other side, our financial experts will be engaging directly on one-on-ones with the employees of Fortis Memorial Research Institute right here at Gurgaon. You are watching our special series. NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Welcome back to Season 5 of NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today we are at the Fortis Memorial Research Institute in Gurugram, and we are engaging with the employees here at Fortis. In this segment, our financial experts are set to take questions from all of them. So. Anyone who has questions, kindly raise your hand and wait for the mic to reach you, please. My question is on the NPS. Right now, it's while we look out at PPF or any other investment from the government, said the investment schemes, they all are under the EEE category. While NPS is EET. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So 
more lights on the time Absolutely. when somebody withdraws at the age of 60. If you look at the PPF, when it's triple E exempt, as you rightly said, when you're investing the interest as well as the majority amount, whatever it comes. In NPS, it's not the case so. You may save tax when you invest up to 50,000 rupees uh, and partially it's tax free, the one third component. The two third component, the annuity that comes is taxable. In many cases, why I don't find this particular attractive is that it is actually deferment of tax. As I said, power of compounding works. Your small amount of money grows exponentially big when you retire. And two thirds of the money annuity that you get, when gets taxable, is nothing but deferment of tax. All right. Yes, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Tanushri. I head uh, PR for the region NCR. My question is, we keep talking about, uh, you know, the goals for retirement. But what kind of investment should retired people, like I have my parents who have retired, what kind of investment, safe investment, should retired people look at? It's a factor of two things. One is um, how much money they need on a monthly basis or yearly basis, and how much is the corpus, how much is the total investment they have. If the money they need is very closely related to the corpus they have in terms of the return, then they should try and restrict themselves into the safest category because you know losing any form of investment the corpus might just impact their lifestyle because the money will reduce however when they reflect on you know how much they need uh, the difference is there as in there is a positive surplus on the corpus side then that portion of money can also grow so you can very well invest into equity even when you're retired, but only when there is a surplus of the corpus needed. Anyone else? Yes, uh, the girl on your left, yes. How much is enough to in, um, you know, save or invest in healthcare? Two good insurance that you should buy, and that should start even before you start investing. One is the health insurance that you should have. The other is a good online term insurance, which is nothing but income replacement. Now what you could do is create a combination of two products because we don't want to uh, dish out a huge amount of premium either, right? So what we do, you can create a base insurance policy of say a 5 lakh rupees from a good company. What you can add is a super top up of about say 20, 20 lakh there about minimum at least. That super top up comes at a very, very nominal fee. So if you add this cover, a 25 lakh cover to a, even a 35, 40 year old will not be more than what 20,000 rupees. And by up to a limit of 25,000, you get tax rebate under Section 80D. Yes. Okay. So you can actually create a good health insurance for yourself by creating this combination. All right. So we're completely timed out on this episode. Thank you so much, uh, all of you at Fortis, for having us here and for being such a participative audience uh, today. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of NSC Finvis, part by CNBC TV 18. Mark Twain once said that the secret of getting ahead is getting started. So get started with those dreams of yours. Get started with investing wisely. And Finviz is always here for insights. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. The event was very insightful. Uh, the questions from the employees, uh, you know, you keep on talking about and uh, talking about investment plans over a cup of tea with other colleagues. But to hear it from, from the experts and to get their perspective and to know that uh, why uh, investing in a market link products uh, can also be beneficial uh, rather than investing only in a traditional portfolio like a PPF or a uh, fixed deposit. The whole event was quite useful for us because as doctors we are not much into our financial planning. So I think this gave me an insight how to do my financial planning in future. Traditionally we like to invest in uh, fixed deposits and uh, traditional way of uh, investing the way our parents taught us. Uh, but uh, with uh, these sessions, it held, it, you know, it just gives us a uh, different perspective how we can invest better. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.